Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger, what up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe. While we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. to Gekenders with Max Cox and Dexatronic Bonasaur. That's it. That's it. That's the show. That's the Wait, show. Mm. That's right. It's me, Max Cox. And me, Dexatronic Bonasaur. Ready to help you out, boss. Cracks Knuckles. I've got to stop this government organization from governmenting all over us. And so I need wow, your help to yikes. hack into the systems. How you got it. If there's anything I'm good at, it's hacking into systems. Click, click, okay, click, I click, 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 I need you to go to P O R N H. P O R N H. Yeah, what was the rest? Uh, I can't say it for the joke. I feel like we'll get in trouble <laughs> with the government. Okay, I'll just fill it in. I'll, I'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. Let it, let you, let, let the Google fill it in for you. S E dot com. <laughs> I don't know how you got there, but you got to get out. It's a trap. You got to get out of there. You got to get out. It's a trap. Get out of there. I didn't listen. I didn't listen. <laughs> yep. There you go. The end. That's the first, last episode. <laughs> we both died horribly. <laughs> That's so sad. Not, we both yeah. died. <laughs> oh, did it end well for us? Hey, buddy. Hey, how are you? I'm doing so good. I was I was gonna ask you earlier, and then I realized I should ask you on Geek Enders. Okay. Um, have you have you popped open Dawn Trail already? I'm literally in the game right now. Of course, of course you are. <laughs> I am sitting in my barracks, uh, doing yes. nothing of value. Um. The reason why, uh, because I woke up today. By the way, hi everyone, welcome to the show. Uh, today yeah. I'm extra excited about Dawn Trail releasing, and I woke up like it was Christmas morning. I went to bed. <laughs> la I did one of those like, the sooner I get to sleep, the sooner I can be awake to celebrate Christmas Day. That's what yep. it was like for me. So I went to bed at 8 p.m. Although I was tired because I was up till 4 a.m. the the previous night, so I was a mess. So I went to bed early. And then I woke up at like six this morning nice. and then got up, make coffee, did stuff. And then because I started to get like, oh boy, I should have slept some more. Went and got more coffee. Right. Yes. <laughs> like an adult would do. Of course. Came into the office, went online, went to Reddit. Cause I was like, I wonder what everyone's saying about Don Show. The first Why thing I saw was. That? Cause I, cause Reddit has been good to me. Uh, the places in Reddit that I go to are not the places in Reddit that are like crazy. I go no, to I'm like not, I'm not I'm not saying that I think but like man, if I I would be so scared I'd get spoiled. Oh. I uh the the, the Final Fantasy 14 Reddit has like a million spoil filters where they will not okay. let you get spoiled. So I'm okay. not worried about that. That's, That's nice. Less. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, when I'm on Reddit, the places I go to, let me let me open this up so I can give you my the Jesse Cox Reddit experience. It's very good. Sure. It's very good. Uh my my uh recents at the moment are R slash Final Fantasy 14, R slash made me smile, R slash oh. UFOs. That's where I'm at right now. 
Okay. And the only reason why I have r slash UFOs is because Mathis keeps linking me there. Because of Mathis, so of course. Yeah. 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 So, the, oh, and uh, and I'm on the Chiluminati pod thing, but like most of the time I'm there, I'm just like looking up, like, oh, that's fun, that's cute. Oh, and r slash Hydro homies, what up, Hydro homies? Um. I really most of the time I'm like whatever. So I'm at the Final Fantasy 14 thing, right. and uh, I'm looking around, and the first thing I see out the gate, first image, Bunny Leather Daddy. Not even joking. I was like, "What is this? What is this?" I'm just gonna copy a link. Okay. Just put it in chat for everyone to see. For those watching the VOD, uh, yeah, describe, you don't need to see it. it. Trust me. No, you don't need to see it. it. No, you need to describe um, it. <sighs> Oh my god. It is a bunny in what appears to be some sort of Mad Max leather daddy suit. I don't know how else to describe it. <laughs> yeah. It is just a full on leather daddy suit. Except I guess it's a lady bun, but whatever, doesn't matter. I was like, oh, "Okay, what is this expansion?" So then I was like, "Okay, interesting." So the next thing I scroll down, the next thing I see is They've ruined the game. My character doesn't look the same at all. The graphics update has ruined everything. My home doesn't look right. The lighting is wrong. Everything is terrible. Every time I, I was like, oh. And then in that, all the comments were like, yeah, this is stupid. I can't even, my character doesn't even look the same. I spent so long making my perfect character. It doesn't look, I'm like, surely it can't be that bad. So I logged into the game mm -hmm. to see what, uh, you know how, what will JC the, looks like? Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah, that's what my boy looks like. Uh, every because what they've done with the new Final Fantasy 14 expansion is they've updated the lighting system, completely different lighting system, and they also have um, like cloth and things look a little better. They've changed kind of like the face. There's a lot of little tweaks they've made. It's not a complete graphics overhaul. They just made tweaks, and in these tweaks, things look different than they have. Because it's it is different, right? Right. And so your character based on shadows and lighting and like skin looks different, right? Darker skin tones look so much better now. Like they've changed everything. Right. But people base their character on a previous system. So when they get in, now they're shocked their character doesn't look the same. So the comments they're making are hilarious. And I was like, man, wow, people seem really mad. They have to like change the character and do whatever. When they had the live letter, when they had the uh, fan fest and they showed all the different images of before and after, and everyone laughed because the Lollafells looked no different. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, <laughs> little JC looks the exact same. There's not a <laughs> damn thing. I logged in and was like, there's my boy. Do I have the right update? <laughs> I was like, has anything changed? He looks the exact same. Fantastic. It is hilarious how he looks. The ex there's no difference. The only difference I think is his eyes are a little less like digital and a, they look clear they look like he's like staring into your soul and honestly when i look at him I'm not, I'm not sure i like it I don't, he's like i see who you are and i'm like oh, i'm all right yeah gotcha but it's fine it's a fine i mean i haven't i literally haven't it's, done anything i logged in so i wouldn't have to fight with people later when it becomes like last time they did a launch i had to wait for like three hours to get in this time yeah uh, 13 people were ahead of me because I logged in at 6 a.m., baby. <laughs> nice. Apparently, <laughs> not, a lot of moving. people have said that they're not having nearly as many problems so far. Knock on wood. Um, that potentially they did something to make it an easier time, this launch. Uh, I don't sure. know if that's true, but... Uh, we'll see. I mean, it is, uh, it is early. You know what I mean? I imagine yeah. Friday at, like, 4 p.m. Eastern is when shit will get a little wacky. We'll, right. uh, but who knows? I have no clue. I don't. I don't know. I imagine we'll, there'll be bugs. And there'll be things to patch out, and it'll be. That's why it's. That's why. Hey, reminder: the game technically doesn't launch until the second. This is early access, so right. if you have bugs and stuff, you're really just uh, beta testing things right now. So, <laughs> love you. I hate to I hate to spoil the fun, but really that's what this is. They released it early so people could go in there and be like, "My character's hair." Like I saw someone put on, you know how there was an event for Christmas where you could get like a Rudolph nose and Rudolph horns. Someone posted an image online where the the nose is here and the <laughs> horns are like back here, and I'm like, okay, we did there it. are some bugs. Yeah, yeah, just a couple. It's fine. Oh yeah, apparently a mon. You know in the Crystal Tower raid. 
uh, that guy Amon, who like, if you don't hide behind the ice blocks, you die instantly. Apparently, mm-hmm. it's not spawning ice blocks right now. Oh, so, interesting. You know, bugs. Bugs are a thing that'll happen, and it's whatever. It, it's okay. Yeah. Uh oh, important message from Dodger being sent. Who you texting? Who My you texting? husband. Is that, is that your boyfriend? Yeah. Who you texting? What's going on over there? He what was, you doing? He, yeah, uh, there's a thing going on at the school, and he was double checking with me that that it, that something didn't get fucked up, and I said it didn't get fucked up. XO XO. What do you mean a thing going on at the school? What's happening at the school? I'm not telling you. <laughs> I'll tell you oh, after Geek Unders. Oh, man. Is it like cool or is it bad? Cool. Cool. But I, it's something. I'll, here, I'll give, you, I'll give you this really vague information. Um, okay, yeah, I won't run with this. It was a thing right? that they were doing at the school. Right. And I was informed she couldn't do it without a parent. And Sam wasn't able to be there at the start time for it. So I was like, okay, then I guess we'll miss it. It's no big. And so he messaged me and was like, what the fuck is this that's going on? And I was like, it's a thing, but you weren't able to be there. And I have geek enders. So we weren't going to do the thing. And he was like, well, apparently we can just do the thing starting from now. So I'm just going to stay and do the thing. And I said, okay. Is it a Sadie Hawkins dance? It is. Awesome. You can do it whenever. I feel like I feel like whenever works. It's just it's just the two of them at the school, and like one teacher has to stay behind, and he's playing like all the jams. Yeah, I'm all pump out up of the love. jam, pump it up. I'm so yeah. far with. Oh yeah. <laughs> we went in different directions, but both of them were good. We got where we like needed to go. School, yeah. school yeah. dance songs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This once again reminds me of uh, my desire not to associate with any living things. Uh, it seems like a hassle. Yeah. You have to like care about them and do right. things with them. It's yeah, true. no, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> I, I, I don't need that hassle. Good, that sounds actually. like a lot of work. Yeah, no, I'm fine. Like you got to like look after them and feed them, <laughs> take them to school. Like, nah, <laughs> nah. I, if I have a kid, they're going to learn from the school of hard knocks. Yep. Their classroom, hard the cocks. mean streets. Sorry. No, no, they will not. No, <laughs> no, they will not. No, they will not. It felt like nope. such an easy joke. No, it was not easy. It was, uh, mm, no, thank you. Anyway, <laughs> no, continue. They will not. No, no, they will not. No, it's his sir. last name, Chad. No, sir. They will. No, sir. They will not. Mm-mm. No, no. I don't. Mm, I don't know what's happened in the UK, but no, sir. They will not. They will. Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> Hello, FBI. <laughs> I figured the best thing to do would be to just let you run out of steam. <laughs> it happens. It yeah. happens. Yeah. So. <laughs> yep. Uh, <laughs> moving quickly away from that, Dex- Dexatronic cancel sore. <laughs> <laughs> He's already dead, dude. Poor Dexatronic. <laughs> Poor Dexatronic. Yeah. He died and then he canceled him. <sighs> he can't even defend himself. On- dead. P O R N H O R S E dot com. It you know instantly still canceled. killed him. You know what? <laughs> still, still killed and canceled. You know what? Deservingly. Deservingly so. He just tried to fill in the blanks with whatever made sense. <laughs> Deserving, <laughs> deservingly so. The guy was a menace. Dexatronic was a menace. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Mm. <laughs> Anyways, Don Trail. Yeah, it's out, and uh, it, it sure I, I, I haven't touched it, so I won't. I won't know a damn thing until next week. <laughs> so it's so yeah, glad I got to no be here for, for the final episode of Geek. <laughs> 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 we had a good.
good run. We had a no, really we had good, a good run. run. Dude. <laughs> uh, wait, did your did your did you put out your thing? My video's done. Yeah, it's out. Yay! Good job. If you're a big, if you're a character, a character. Oh my god. A caricature. <laughs> If you're a caricature of a person like the two of us, um, <laughs> let me just stress that uh, if you're interested in Final Fantasy 14 but have no idea anything about it and you don't want to sit here and listen to Dodger and I talk about it, hey, <laughs> you can learn something. Mm. You can go. Uh, I have three videos out now. Uh, one is a prehistory of the game. One is like a little factual thing about a conceptual idea in it. And one is the 1.0 story. Uh, so if you want to jump in, uh, you'll have all the background information you need to play the game built in. Well uh, all three all three videos are like, I think, less than 50 minutes, at least less than an hour for three whole videos of lore. And uh, they're well done, I, if I do say so myself, and really simple to understand because I uh, use my teacher brain. I will say one of the funniest things in the world is I straight up say in the videos – and say in the comments, guys, these are from the perspective of a person who has never played the game before and has no prior knowledge. And more importantly, all the knowledge that we do learn later that would reflect upon this is not included because right. I want you to have the experience of playing it and I don't want to spoil anything. All the comments are like, actually, <laughs> during this. Well, wait like, a minute, though. One guy sent me a full email that was like. I noticed four factual errors. And I was like, brother, everything you said is absolutely true. But at that point in time, starting a Realm Reborn, you would not know that information. Right. So why would I include it? And he's like, well, it's like you're not even telling the full story. I'm like, brother. That's on purpose. My, that's my, the point. My dude. <laughs> like, that is the point, homie. I'm, I'm leaving the appropriate gaps to allow for... Gameplay. <laughs> I saw I saw one guy uh, be like, I felt it was pretty lazy that you just included the trailer at the end. I was like, uh, I chose the act of show, not tell, to demonstrate what I was trying. I uh, made a direct choice. Uh, I felt like it was better that way. And I'm sorry you don't approve. But what I did, I think it makes for a better video. And he was like, I disagree. I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. Okay. <laughs> My bad. I guess that's why there are other videos out there for yeah. other people. Like you know, you can work your ass off on a bunch of videos like you did, um, and still everybody won't be happy with it, especially with a lore breakdown sort of a thing. There's, it's yeah. sort of built in that people are going to be like, "Wait a minute!" But I didn't like this because X Y Z, and that's fine. You still worked really hard on it. A lot of people like it and found it really valuable, and that's what matters. I'm not even stressed. Mm. I think it's great. This isn't one of those things Good. where I put it out and was like, <sighs> boy, I hope they like it. I'm like, no, that shit slaps. I busted my ass on that. I'm not, this isn't even one of those like, did I do a good job? I'm like, no, that shit's good. Yeah. I don't even care. You, you don't even have to like it. I know it's good. I am so confident in that. I don't even care. So, yeah. Um, so if you want to do that, go nuts. But that's not all I did this week, oh, sweet friend of mine. Go on. First off, by the way, if we're going to talk uh, media things, um, yeah. I just want to say two things. Get this out of the way. One, look, I know, I know that Game of Thrones <laughs> cheated us. I know Game of Thrones lied and broke all our hearts. I know the ending of that series was one of, in fact, the worst endings ever on the TV show. However, with that said, House of the Dragon is fire. That show's so good. I am angry how good it is. It is. I haven't, so I haven't watched good. it. I'm so glad though. It is. Uh, the acting is phenomenal. The last two episodes have been like stellar. Literally nothing has happened. And it is like. House of. Wait, House of Master Fire? No. House of Dragons. <laughs> yeah, close enough. That works. Um. It has just been a master class of acting. <laughs> it has been a, like, everyone in the show is so good. Literally, the guy who plays Otto. So, last season, 
the guy who played the king, they gave him a whole episode to just be like the best actor ever I've ever seen on TV. That man was awesome. He was so good. I was like, holy shit. I was like, they nice. gave that. They gave that. This time around, the guy who plays Otto Hightower, they were just like, let him act. Fuck it. Let him act. The last episode, I was like, every line of dialogue was the most gravitas line I've ever heard. There, there is a scene towards the end of the episode. I'm not going to spoil it. But they just stuck him in a room with two other characters and were like, crank that shit to 11. <laughs> and he just ate up the scene. But in like dad who's over it kind of way. Sure. And it was so, and I was like, I love this show. I love this show. Um, yeah, everything about it is uh, is great. Like, I love, I love every actor in it is phenomenal. They're putting in like 110%. They added like, Dodger. Yeah. Uh, yes. Let me ask you a question. I would as, love a question. Yes. As. Yeah. As a person of the female persuasion. Sure. Have you ever dated anyone like a beautiful man? Just gorgeous. Uh, follow me here. Don't uh, don't do one I'm of those waiting. like, you mean my husband? Shut up. No, it's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have, in fact, pushes up glasses. <laughs> have you ever dated a uh, a beautiful man? Yeah. Who turned out to be like the biggest gaslighting piece of shit who ever existed? I have. I That's have crazy. dated one of those. <laughs> I feel like yeah. most women have, and uh, they put him in this show, and he is so, like, completely... Believably you, that guy. Holy shit. Like, in season one, he, his entire story is like, I'm gonna try and bang this girl. I'm gonna try. And then when he gets rejected, he's like, I will make my whole life's goal to ruin her. I was like, bro! And it's crazy. Like, he is the worst the worst dude, Damn. his trajectory on the show is failing upwards. It's like every trope of every terrible dude who ever existed is crammed into this man. And I, I know because it's game of, at some point he's going to die horribly. And I am just waiting for it. Yeah. I'm waiting for it to happen because I'm just like, yo, this guy sucks. Anyway, phenomenal show. I'm loving it. I cannot stress it enough. I cannot stress how much I, uh, I I love this show. Anyway, second, I have to watch media it. thing. Yes, second you media should, thing. You should. Uh, it's very good. Um, second media thing. Yes. I have discovered mm. that the Jesse Cox theory of sci-fi has been proven true once again. Okay. So hit me. I'm just gonna I'm gonna use this uh, uh, Star Wars acolyte as the example. Okay. But this goes beyond. That show it goes to all it goes to all sci-fi. And this is why I think sci-fi fans should lighten up on everything completely. Um <clears throat> yes. Star Wars Acolyte was four kind of like whatever episodes. It was like eh, whatever. The fifth episode comes out, and it's the craziest shit I've seen in Star Wars in a long time. I'm like, what is he? What? And I realize the Acolyte, just like Clone Wars, just like most Star Wars properties, except for Andor, which I think is a standout. Most of it is like three fourths hot garbage and then one fourth the coolest shit you've ever seen. And that translates to Doctor Who, to Star Trek, to Babylon 5, to Stargate, to any, any sci fi property you can think of. I am convinced that is the case. It is all one fourth awesome and it stands out and you remember it forever and that's why you love it. And three fourths. Well, I guess it's another data trying to have sex episode. Like, that is it. I am convinced of it. And I think we could all just lighten up on all sci-fi. And everyone who says bullshit, next generation is great. I, oh, my God. I think you are rosy color. It's, it is very good. In fact, it may be great. But I love next generation. But if you're about to say every single episode. You're out of your mind. <laughs> is amazing. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> You're out of your mind. You're and, just and wrong, it's the same. you know. Every first season of Star Trek, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager is jank. They don't know what they're doing. They haven't figured it out yet. The second season starts off and you're like, all right, we're hitting the ground running. This is going to be good. But to say every, you're out of your mind. And I think that's the same thing with all sci-fi. 
all sci-fi is we put in our minds the like great episodes that stick with us forever. The things like in Battlestar Galactica, the TV show that was on the, the like remake. Yeah. All I can think about are there many, many good episodes, but there's also many episodes where like, what the fuck is happening? What are they doing right now? Especially the ending. And I, and, and like the more you think about it, the more you think about kind of like, it's just, they're experimenting with ideas. Sci-fi is we're going to sit down and just experiment. And sometimes it can be hit. Sometimes it can be miss. And a lot of times it's going to be miss. And also it caters to what certain people like. Like sci-fi is different to everyone. I get it. I think I've just, once you get in that headspace, it doesn't matter if it's great or not. Cause you're like, all right, let's go on an adventure. Let's like, see what happens. It's Farscape, as- I do not believe is perfect, but that is again, preference. So I'm, I, I just want to make sure that I'm following you. So yes. is, is all this to say people are really shitting on Acolyte, but like, if you go into it, not expecting much, it's fine. Um, I would say that it's again, it's preference. I think people shitting on Acolyte want one thing, but there's, I've seen many people who, who love Acolyte and that's fine. It's all preference. Like I, so for me, Acolyte is in a show that like, uh, people are freaking out about things. That I was like, I don't know why we're freaking out. Like, whatever. But uh, I wasn't hyper interested because to me, the pacing was weird. Right. Um, and the editing seemed strange. Uh, but then, oh, also, I figured out the twist in episode five, like in episode one or two, whenever they were. Vi- right. I was like, oh, that's yeah. definitely the bad guy. I was like, oh, that's the bad guy. Like immediately. Because because yeah, because last week. Last week, right, is when you went on the rant about about the editing. What? Yeah, yeah. There was there was an acolyte rant before this. On yeah, yeah, and it was just the editing's weird. Um, but it wasn't anything shocking to me. I was like, yeah, okay, it's fine. It's like a fine show. It doesn't like Andor hooked me because Andor had like amazing writing. The the writing in Acolyte is not great. It's a lot of like, we've got to go. Where where are we going? I don't know. <laughs> like it's a lot of it's a lot of like okay, we're just yeah. trying to go from point A to point B. Um, but it's 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 like all right. The last episode was super fun. It was the first time in a while they've done like some really cool stuff. Uh, I was very happy with the lightsaber stuff they did. It was neat. Um, but it made me realize once again that like yeah, here I am. It. Re- the Acolyte reminds me of Star Wars Episode One, where if okay. you look back at it, it is the vast majority of the movie is kind of like, eh. But then you remember the pod race and Except you remember the, the fight racing. at the end. <laughs> yeah, the pod racing and the fight at the end. And you're like, yo, when you leave that movie as a kid, you're like, that was awesome. But looking back, it's like that is three fourths kind of a lame movie. And then one fourth like, oh, that was cool. I fully believe that's sci fi. Most sci fi is kind of lame. With really cool shit put in it. And you're like, oh, oh, I love that. The thing is, what I'm trying to say is, Mm. what you find lame will be different for everyone. Sure. And the one-fourth you find that you love will be different for everyone. And that's what I'm saying. I got you. So just embrace it. Embrace that it's going to be, like, goofy. It's fine. Anyway, video games. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to get that out because I have no one to talk to about it. That's fair. Is is no one no else one to to. is no one else really watching Acolyte that you know? No, Davis uh, has decided he hates new Star Wars, and so talk, he just gets mad when you talk about new Star Wars. Okay, Alex is like I do too much now, so he doesn't. You know, I had my Star Wars query. I had no one to talk to, um, and then the only person I have to talk to about House of the Dragon is my mom, which by the way she loves it, which is weird to me. She, I wasn't gonna watch it. Yeah. originally and then my mom messaged me like it's really good it's like i don't know game of thrones bummed me out she's like no it's good so i watched the first season and was like holy shit <laughs> <laughs> gotta trust are- the lady she knows what's up so um our moms both watch this show so uh just as as a preface for everybody who's listening right now um <laughs> is your mom because we have some weird crossover with our parents. True. Is your mom like the sort of person where you bring up a show and she's like, oh, yeah, I've watched that. Is she like, yes. is she like a TV hound? Oh, oh, yeah. She, she 100% watches shows that I would never watch. 
um, she will message me and, and I'll just get a message out of the blue. They'll be like, have you seen insert name of show? I'm like, no. She's like, it's good. You should watch it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right. A DVR or like being able to record shows in whatever way changed the game for my mom. She used to, she used to juggle that shit so hard. And now she can watch all of the soap operas. She can watch all of the sitcoms, everything. And everyone in our family at some point has had a conversation like, it's crazy how many shows Susan is able to watch, right? Like how is she keeping up with all these shows? <laughs> um, yeah, anyways. I just wanted to really quickly, this is from June 3rd. I didn't have to scroll back that far. Yeah. <clears throat> June 3rd, 12.48 p.m. Be sure to watch Eric on Netflix. And I'm like, what's that? Hold on. Oh, it looks fun. My mom goes, much fun. Creepy, according to dad. Did you watch it? No. Jesse. <laughs> I'm busy. I got stuff to do. I just like that my mom goes, creepy, according to according dad. According to dad. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Oh uh, yeah. So there you go. That's anyway. That's, I get those messages all the time. Yep. I was just, I was just curious. Uh, cause yeah, my pretty much any show I could bring up. My mom will be like, I've watched that. Yeah. So she, my mom watches, uh, roughly the same things I do, which I feel like I get most of Cause I definitely don't get my taste in media from my dad. My dad's right. taste in media is like every Western, every war movie, uh, if it's black and white, it's probably better. Yes. Um, he <laughs> watches a lot of black news. and white shows. He watches a lot of news, but not like he watches like really fringe news to get mad at it. Like he'll, he'll be like, look at this idiot. I can't believe what he's saying. And I'm like, don't watch it, dude. Don't. He's like, no, oh, God, they're so dumb. Like he'll do that. Um, and then uh, he'll watch sports. Actually, he listens to sports more than watch. He'll like listen to the radio a lot. Old school. Meanwhile, <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, my mom will be like, saw the new Marvel show. What'd you think? I was like, I didn't even know there was one. And she's like, oh, I watched it already. Or uh, she'll, you know, watch murder mysteries. She'll watch weird sci-fi shows. She'll watch uh, a lot of like um, detective drama. If there's yeah. a British detective show, she's seen it. Good taste. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that's her thing. She'll watch all that. Oh, and the one thing she does, I'm going to say religiously, mm -hmm. if there is a parade, a live performance on public broadcasting, or some sort of holiday themed special, she'll record it. And then the next time I'm over, force me to watch it. I she'll love be like, that for you. you have to see this. I'm like, do I? She's like, there's a guy who goes to every national park and he films it and it's beautiful. Look at this. And she'll sit me down and force me to watch whatever the hell it is she recorded. And I'm like, oh my God, mom, I don't need to. She's like, no, watch it, watch it, watch This is important. And then she'll show it to me. And it's like 30 seconds of footage. She's like, you could have told me about this. She's like, no, you had, you had to see it. You had to see it. I'm like, okay. I had a, I had a weird moment the other night when I was a kid we every single night would watch Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. And when I visit my mom, she still will always put on Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune. Um, and I had, a, I had a moment the other day where I was like, I wish so badly I could carry on this tradition, but I can't just put on Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune here. Mm -hmm. And I got really sad about it. So I went to see if I could find a game show of some kind to put on just to like ease the discomfort. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, the only thing that was on was the chase. <laughs> okay, sure. So I put on the chase and I don't know the names of all of the like smart beasties that are on that show, but mm. um, the lady in leopard print with the cool glasses was, Love was, her. it was her. Yeah. Um, and Clark, was in the second she saw her was like this lady i was like hell yeah she's a genius and clark was like hell yeah and got really invested and started watching but i was like it's not quite it's not quite what i wanted but it's not quite the same yeah yeah not quite you know not quite as the issue is accessibility in my mind mm -hmm. um mental accessibility 
Because the chase is literally, it's like a fast-paced trivia show. And you could argue right. that Jeopardy is also a fast-paced trivia show. But I don't know. The vibe's just different. Um, and Wheel I, of Fortune I, is like any Yahoo can like participate in Wheel of Fortune a little bit, you know? I will say there is definitely a difference in game shows in the UK. Like, based on what I've watched. Clearly, this is just what I've watched. Um, but in the US, it's a lot of... Uh, Spin a wheel, guess a letter, or here's a question, we need an answer, mm -hmm. or um, I'm going to say a letter and then you try to guess the word, or I'm going to, like, things like that. Yeah. In the UK, a lot of it is like, you've got 16 seconds to solve this thing, go. Or uh, we're going to give you 8,000 letters, you need to come up with <laughs> words, go. Or um, things like, these people gathered together to see if they could get water into a bucket, but the bucket has a hole, right? Or um, four old ladies have gone to the countryside to shop for tchotchkes, and they only have five pounds. Who will bring back the best set? Like, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think it's really... And it, the British game show market is so varied. Most of America is like, we polled a bunch of Americans. Guess what they said? Or, all right, what's the most popular answer for this thing? Or, uh, hey, try. Meanwhile, the American. Keep There's a mower right next to the office. Keep talking. The American market for, for gaming shows is like if you guess five questions correctly, you'll win $1 million. But if, in the UK, it's like if you are on our show for six and a half weeks, Look at this, look at this, look at this monster. Look at this monster. Uh, this is the difference. America and the UK, it changes you. It changes you, it makes you a goof. That's right, that's right, Brits. Goofs, all of you. You're, you're known throughout the world as goofs. Stip upper goops. Goops, that's right. Um, Stiff upper goops. Stip upper goops, yeah. Uh, what right I'm here. saying is that uh, in America, it's like, you could be on a game show where you all you have to do is answer five questions and you win a million dollars. In the UK, it's like you're back for your fifth week on the show for a grand total prize of 500 pounds. <laughs> the you know, prize money in the UK is out of whack. It's very funny. You know what I think the United Kingdom definitely does way better than America is the, the um, comedian panel game shows. Oh, we don't even, Com that doesn't even Comedian exist Comedian panel yet. stuff in general is like, sure. they love that out here. And mm. Americans love to watch it. So I'm so surprised that in America, we haven't really tried to do that. We, uh, the closest thing is that dropout show. I don't watch it, but I know of its existence. But that's on the internet. That's like an internet thing. Yeah. There isn't really a TV-based show like that here in the US. Like, I'm shocked that we haven't, and maybe, maybe we've tried and they were like, absolutely not. Um, but QI has been huge in America for a long time. And I'm so surprised we haven't tried to do an American QI ever. I'm going to let you know, I think it's because we lack, like, oh boy, this is going to sound rough. There is We're not a, smart enough. We're not funny enough. Both? There is a <laughs> fundamental, I don't know if it's desire or um, need or whatever it is, maybe it's culturally, in the UK, being a witty comedian is considered very important. Right. In the US, a lot of comedy is like, I take my shirt off and I'm fat. <laughs> like that's- Get her done. There's a, there's yeah. a lot of that. There's a lot yeah. of that. And it's like, oh, cool. Um, and sometimes that can be funny, but a lot of it is like, you know, I mean, when I grew up, the guy who was like the funniest comedian at the time was literally his whole shtick was like shabadoo, ba ba boo, ooh, they're all gonna laugh at you. Like that was Adam Sandler's shtick. That was his thing. Chris Farley, I loved Chris Farley. Chris Farley fell over and was like, who uh, down by the river? Like we that love is, slapstick, it's a different, dude. It's a different vibe. Yeah. yeah, it's a very different vibe. Yeah, we we don't. You're right. You're absolutely right. The the highest value comedian out here is like. I'm funny, but I'm also smart. Right. In America, that is not a requirement. It's not the case. 
<laughs> and it's, it, it's like a different value system of what funny is. And I feel like the reason why is because for some reason, this country we've made like being smart a crime. <laughs> like the smarter you are, the more people hate you. They're like, look at this big brain nerd. <laughs> and it's like, oh boy. Like again, a great example is Conan O'Brien is very smart. Mm. But I watched Conan my entire life and he played up being an idiot constantly. His yeah. whole shtick was like, we know he's smart, but he's a goofball. Right. That's, I mean, that's the thing. Is Conan's like one of Conan's one of the smartest people on TV, but like he played a goof because that's what people like. Yep. It is what it is. No, I don't know. Anywho. I don't think we could do it here. I'm sure we've tried and it's failed. Hmm. Maybe. I'm trying. I'm. I'm sorry. I. I blacked out for a second while I was trying to remember what the game show network is called. It's called the game show network. Oh, the game show network. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> Yeah. The Game uh, Show Network, most of the shows on there America, is like... There's literally an entire channel called the Game Show Network that's just weird, yep. weird, goofy game shows. So, Yeah. Um, also, I just want to say for the record, a lot of the comedians in America who are very, very smart, who make smart content, eventually get really sad. I just figured I'd mention that. A lot of them are like, their yeah. last special is like, guys, I think life... It's terrible. And you're like, what happened, dude? I don't know. I guess I'm just going to retire. And you're like, what do you mean? Wait, What's going on with you? Come back. Yeah. <laughs> the existential dread of your brain being too big and thinking, yeah. thinking about too much stuff. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, not, not, I, sometimes I miss that. Like, I love QI as a show. I think everything about it is super interesting. I love that it's a bunch of comedians who get to be funny, but actually you learn something. I think that is like peak Jesse content. Mm. That is, if you can make a video, if you're a YouTuber and that's your vibe, I'm here. I love that kind of stuff. I'm a big fan of like, not, there's a lot of YouTube content that is, the comedy is being mean. You know what I mean? Yes. 100%. And it's like, if you can punch at someone, that's the comedy. And uh, I hate that stuff. I would rather watch something that's informative and funny um, and like, you know, can keep me from having to be like, boy, we sure all are a bunch of assholes. <laughs> like, okay, cool. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I don't know. That's, that's who I am. I, um, I have a game I could talk about. Me too. I have plenty. Go talk to me. So there's a game that I started playing. Um, as you know, I love a puzzle game. You love a puzzle game. Uh, there's a game that came out called Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. I have seen this. It looks so very cool. It is weird in a really cool way. I've been um, told it's a Jesse game. Yeah. Yes. So this game is a, it like, if <sighs> this is a proper, like, puzzles everywhere the place you're in is booby trapped with puzzles you complete a puzzle and then you're like fuck that puzzle just led me to three more puzzles <laughs> right it's one of those sorts of games um it's fascinating uh at the start of the game it's the, the aesthetic is really nice the developer is simogo um for anybody who played Cyan or sayonara wild hearts um that's also a beautiful game that's a very cool game yeah, the the aesthetic of this game is so neat. You are at the start of the game, um, a woman outside of your car, um, and it just sort of like drops you in, like you've arrived somewhere, right? And and you just have to approach. Uh, you have a note that uh, is talking about a hotel that you've been invited to by someone who seems kind of like eccentric. They're talking about like creating high art with you or whatever. Um, and you, the player just kind of like, okay. Right. Uh, and it's one of those, like, you're trying to get it. You're at a hotel. You're trying to get deeper and deeper and deeper into the hotel. But it's when I say it's been booby trapped with puzzles, it's like everywhere. Every single place that you want to go to requires you to do something. Um, and the way that the game like slowly unpeels itself and you reveal more and more of it is so addictive. It's like, oh my God, 
I feel like I'm never going to, like, you get to those walls where you're like, I'm never going to progress. And then you figure something out and you're like, God, my brain is huge. I'm so smart. You know, um, there is, I will, I will give a warning. There are so many number puzzles in this game. <laughs> there, if you, if you hate math puzzles, that, that will be a, an aspect of this game that, that you, you maybe don't like very much. But it's so cool. And I feel like at like the, according to the game UI, when I was at like the 40% mark of like, I figured out 40% of what's going on. Um, it feels like at that point is when suddenly it was like, okay, here's what the game is though. Here's, mm -hmm. here's, here's what's going on, you know? Um, which was, which was great. I, I love the, the feeling of like, ah, uh, actually here's some newness, right? Now that, now that you've gotten into the swing of it, here's, here's more. Sure. Um, I love it. I think is it's the really music cool. Good? Is, the mu is the music clap? The music is very complimentary to the vibe of what's going on in the game. So like, so it's not like, it's not like, uh, the previous game. It's very, uh, the the underlying music is very like da 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 you know sort of like you're walking around a hotel and there are puzzles and you need to do that right you know just like it just sort of blends in you stop hearing it after a while but all over the place they've put jukeboxes or not jukeboxes record players and you can choose to turn on a record player and like certain rooms will have like kind of vibey music in one way or another um, that matches what room they're in. So there, there is some like nice music that you can put on in specific rooms in the hotel. But yeah, the vibe hmm. of it is so interesting and so weird. Um, what would you rate like um, puzzle time to completion like for each puzzle like on average how would you uh, rate them as like was it one of those ones where easy puzzle easy puzzle stuck on a puzzle for 25 minutes um the puzzles that i've gotten stuck on when it's like here's the puzzle i know i can complete it mm -hmm. the puzzles that i've gotten stuck on the longest have been optional gotcha um, okay i would say a lot of times a lot, of, a lot of this game is like, I found a door. There's a lock on the door. The lock is in Roman numerals. I don't think I've seen a Roman numeral code anywhere yet. I guess I'll come back to this, right? It's a lot of like keeping track of sure. what's, you know, what you've found so far so that when you get a relevant thing or find a relevant thing, you can backtrack. Um, the game slowly gives you more and more ways to backtrack. There are shortcuts and things. Uh, but um, yeah, a lot of it is like, and I think this is consistent with, with plenty of games that are like layered puzzles, but uh, a lot of times it's me going, can I figure this out yet? Is there, do I need to come back to this? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I'm surprised to find out like, no, I can totally figure this out on my own. I just sort of assumed I needed something else or, you know, whatever. Um, but I think chat might disagree, but I think a lot of the puzzles that I've spent a really long time on have been puzzles that I didn't explicitly have to do. They were like shortcut puzzles. Okay. You have to do puzzles I mean, to open up shortcut. You have to do puzzles to do everything, chat. It's great. It's a great game. Uh, but yes. Okay. I, I, I feel like, oh boy, this is a stretch, but uh, this is a late to the party Jesse moment here, but it's definitely potentially a late to the party Dodger moment too. Yes. Have you ever played, I, I'm waiting for the comments to just roast me on this because it's definitely like, have you ever played this year old game? Dodger, yeah. have you ever played Amanda the Adventurer? No. I don't even think I've heard of it. Fantastic. So um, this, is a, this is a game that is, it's a horror game, but I don't think it's very scary. Um, if anything else, it's a escape room puzzle style game where you're in an attic and uh, you have access to a bunch of VHS tapes. And they are of a old TV show called A Man of the Adventurer. Mm. And as you play through it, the story unfolds, and I think it's very interesting. There's a lot of hidden tapes to find that have, like, real-life footage of 
stuff and you're like, oh, cool. But um, it is kind of like unraveling a mystery where basically you put in a tape and then after you watch the tape, the room behind you suddenly changes and there's something different about it and you have to solve a puzzle. And then by solving okay. the puzzle, you get access to another tape. But as you watch the tapes, you might notice something in the background like a number code or a bunch of musical notes. And oh, by the way, there's a little piano in the room. So if you go over the musical notes, you can like play a thing and then like get something. Mm -hmm. And as you interact with it, you unlock things in the game. The thing is, if you go through the game once, when you go through it again, the knowledge you have, you can use immediately to start unlocking things to then get oh, access so to nice. other things. And it's, I absolutely love it. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a scary game. I don't think it's scary at all, but I think it's fascinating and really well put together. And I know the demo for the sequel just dropped. Mm. And um, it is one of those What's games the that sequel is called. Oh boy. Amanda, the adventure too. I don't know. <laughs> something. <laughs> okay. um, but literally just imagine like door of the Explorer kind of vibes. Um, but there's, there's something really exciting about the idea of watching a story unfold and finding little clues and little things that you can use. I love those kinds of games. This is yeah. such a Jesse game. I was so impressed with it. I was like, yo, this is great. So I cannot wait to that sounds uh, fun. Yeah. play the sequel. I think you'll love it. I think if there's like a creepy overtone to it. But it's not scary. It's not like there's no jump scares happening. It's it's just like uh, we probably shouldn't be watching this very cursed footage of like a child's TV show that is like clearly fourth wall breaking a little bit, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I love it. Speaking of scary stuff, have have you guys on SGS or even just yourself, have you guys played um, Still Wakes the Deep yet? I it's on our list of things. The biggest issue I had is I read, I started looking at reviews. So here's my problem with I've, a lot of I've scary games. I've finished it. So if you have any questions. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here's, so I have um, read the reviews mm. and my biggest issue with a lot of scary games is, so when we do Scary Game Squad, I have those guys for four, five hours a week, maybe. Yeah. A lot of the times, if it's a longer game, like eight hours, we have to do it over two weeks. Right. The problem is that a lot of the time, longer games have a first two hours are awesome. The last six are just like a slog to get through. It's kind of like the big idea with um, Alien Isolation. Alien sure. Isolation, awesome. And then there's a whole part with no aliens. And you're like, what the shit is this? I'll, I will tell you right now. This game is not super long. If you normally have them for about five hours, I think you can knock it out in, in one session. Also, mm -hmm. it is killer from start to end. Okay. All right. I, 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 my thing was I saw uh, – the reason why I was like, we'll get to it eventually. I saw a lot of reviews that were like, awesome intro, the beginning, so cool. And then it kind of like it's slow. And I was like, Oh, okay. my God. I didn't think so. So. I didn't right. think so. I'll trust I, you over the internet. Yeah. Um, I loved this game. Uh, it's entirely Scottish voice actors. Um, Cute. And it's fantastic. Uh, a bunch of like uh, Scottish people who have played the game have said the accents are like perfection. They obviously hired Scottish voice actors. Um, sure. you, have, uh, you have closed caption options or like subtitle options, one of which is what they are explicitly saying and one of which is i don't know scottish slang please translate for me which That's is really what funny. i turned on yeah <laughs> it was great um so you don't have to know all of the slang that they're using you can you can turn on it's it's the automatic english subtitles i think is just like we're gonna we're gonna translate the slang for you um which i thought was great <laughs> i really appreciated I that, that. I think that's great yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it's fantastic. I, I really loved it. Um, somebody pointed out that there is a show I think called the rig that has an extremely similar premise. The premise of still wakes the deep is that you are on an oil rig. You're Kaz, uh, Kaz the lecky. You're the, you're the electrician on an oil rig. Um, and then 
weird shit happens, right? Uh, it's vibe wise. So good. I really, really loved it. I love the characters. I got really attached to everybody. Um, but yeah, apparently there's a show called like the rig or something similar. And it's a bunch of people on an oil rig in Scotland and weird shit happens. On the I'm, literally, I'm literally looking at the rig TV series, which I guess has one season and they were renewed for a second season, but it straight up is a Scottish oil rig in the North seas enveloped by an unnatural fog that cuts them off from the outside from outside communications. Uh, yeah. And then they start to get infected by something and they believe whatever it was, was unleashed from the seafloor. Yeah. That's hilarious. I love that. Hilariously similar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I very much am like, okay, I'll give it a shot. Again, it comes down to kind of uh, timing and what I can do with these boys. I honestly think the, I think the game's pacing, it's not the sort of game that encourages you to like faff around too much, I don't think. So I, I, I feel like you guys as a group, I think you'd be able to knock the game out real quick. All right. I like that. I'm uh. I am very curious about, like, I've seen enough trailers of it to know, like, it is right up my alley of scary. Um, I'm very curious to see what the overall story experience is. So mm. it's on the list. We'll get to yeah. it eventually. In the meantime, uh, we we played, I don't want to spoil it because it'll be out on Monday, but we played a game that, like, I don't know, was barely a game. <laughs> like, that's a li I feel like a lot of scary games are, like, we like had a, a walking premise. sim or... No, like a, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It, it, it. A game where you have to get out of a situation. You're strapped to a chair, but it's less a game and more of just like an experiment in your tolerance for pain. It's wild. I don't understand it. I, I Sometimes I wonder how games what? are made. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't get it. I don't know how to explain it. But, um, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's. Like, n Weird. at least for me, Walking Simulator has kind of like a point. This one didn't really have a – the point was, like, just to mess with you, the game. And mm. I was like, all right. I mean, every game, I guess, is for someone. But it was very – I enjoyed it because uh, it was scary and it made Davis mad. And any game that makes Davis mad, I know it's upset him because it scared him so much he's angry at it. Yeah. And that means it's good. So for me, it's fine. I like the game. But I also – I don't think it's, I don't know that I'd call it a game. I call it like, it had the same level of craftsmanship as like a 2004 Newgrounds game. It was a game technically, mm -hmm. but I don't know that it like, I don't know what's going on there. So we'll see. We'll see what people think. <laughs> but Mad Davis is best Davis. Agreed. Mm -hmm. um, with that said, have you, uh, I talked about Exit 8 before. Yes. Uh, have you played Platform 8? No. Ooh, girl. Okay. Is it similar? Is it same dev? Same devs? universe. Same universe. Okay. Same dev. Okay. Exit eight is go around in a circle, right? You have to figure out what's different. And if it's different, turn around. And the point is you have to get through eight levels of that to escape. Platform eight is just a straight line. It is, it is a straight line where you're on the train itself. Okay. And as you open the door for every car, there could be something weird about it or something not. But the weirdness isn't like exit eight. It's like, oh, the door handle is different or a sign is different. Platform eight is like you enter the room and at the other end of the car, there's this weird glitchy person and they're slowly coming at you. If you get touched by them, you die. So okay. how do you avoid them? What is it? You can't turn around. You can't leave the car. What is the escape here? Um, or you uh, are in the train car and then the, the you know, what says like the, what the next stop is, it would flash red and be like, don't get off. And then the train stops, the doors open and the whole point is to get off. Right. But it's like, don't get off. Don't do this. Don't get off. And you're like, what do I do? Um, there's ones where, you get to the end and you try to open the door and you can't. And some guy's like, Hey, let me out, dude. Come on. Hey, come on. And you're like, do I let him out or not? like that kind of thing? Right. So it's, it's less of a spot. What's wrong. 
and more of a how do you solve the puzzle in this right area. solve solve the scenario in this car sort of a thing yeah and sometimes it's real simple like one of the puzzles is just you have to dodge a thing one of them is just don't move there was one that i could not figure out until i finally did which is like there's this woman who's like shaking violently to the point where like her face is crazy and she's coming at you but every time either the lights go out or you blink she's closer right and okay. so you have to like get out of the way and i was like well how do i dodge this literally all i did is i sat down in one of the seats and she started to angle towards me and then when i blinked again i just got up and ran past like bye bitch and ran right. and it worked so like that kind of stuff very fascinating um minimal plot i'm not going to spoil the fun twist that happens in it but it's great and I will simply say, like, uh, very solid short game. I think this one took 35, 40 minutes to beat, mostly because I was trying to figure out how to beat things. Because mm. if you die, then you start over. Do you start over from the very beginning? So yeah. And you yeah. have to do each cart all over again? Okay. And every time, there's, it's different every time. There's different ones. What you get will be different. You, it, it'll be a whole different thing. And so I love that kind of stuff. And mm. I guess there's another game called oh boy uh shinkansen zero which okay. is very similar and looks extremely cool and it looks even more creepy than platform eight so mm. i'll give that a shot next yeah because there are people in chat saying you're immune to being spooked now that's uh, slowly becoming true um do you think scary uh, game squad has created a situation where you're getting desensitized no, if something, if I get jump scared, I'll still get jump scared. Mm. Right? Like that, that will get me. Every a jump scare will always get me. I'll always go, oh, I'll always be like the laugh. But then I'll laugh hysterically afterwards and yeah. be like, oh my God, that was amazing. Um, but I think creepy vibes don't really get me anymore. I, re I realized that it didn't affect me while playing Mortuary Assistant because. Mm. I, I, I played Mortuary Assistant. I don't know if it was on stream or wherever it was. I was playing Mortuary Assistant. And the very first time I played, the, the game told me, okay, here's the premise. You're a young woman and you need this job. Your mom is like, honey, you got to get this job. And uh, the guy's like, all right, so here's the deal. Every night you have to take care of three bodies. Oh, by the way. Uh, I tricked you. There's actually demons and shit in here and you have to get rid of the demons. So like, don't, you know, but literally you are doing step-by-step -step process of working at a mortuary and you have to deal with the bodies. Like you're right. like you're suturing and you're sucking blood out. You do the whole thing. The entire time, even though there's like moments where like a creepy guy's like, yeah. And like, sometimes the bodies move or they'll like, look at you or there's where there's like, jump scary creepy moments the entire time i was like mm -mm, demon i got work to do i got three bodies to deal with i don't have time for this bullshit and i was just working like do the they demon do anything the corner, to you um not really so the whole premise is you have three bodies you have to deal with and one of those three bodies is the one the demon has inhabited and you need to oh. mark it burn it and then that's how you get rid of the demon Okay. And if you do, you'll get a good ending. If you don't, you'll get, there's a several bad endings, right? There's all sorts of different endings. And um, as you deal with this thing uh, and you try to figure out what the demon is, because you have to find sigils around, like there's a bunch of moments where the lights go off or you hear people yelling at you or you, like your mom's outside, like, honey, let me in, you know, like that kind of stuff. Um, but there's this like weird, creepy, like pale ass white demon thing that will show up in the corner sometimes. Or uh, like you turn the corner and he'll be like looking at you. The entire game. I was just like, the boss said I have to get three bodies done. And by mm -hmm. God, I'm going to get three bodies done before morning. So I was just, there's, it's so funny because I was like, all right, you know, stitching up the body, stitching up the mouth, putting the things in the eyes, like doing the whole thing. And the demon's like, I'm in the room with you. And it's like, I got work to do, bitch. I don't care. And I'm like, Swear. <laughs> like it did not phase me at all. Yeah. At all. And then when I was done, I like got the ending I got. And I was like, yeah, I feel pretty good about that. I put in a hard day's work. Like I just, I did not care. I was so, I did not, the demon did not phase me. I was like, look, I got mm -hmm. shit to do. 
I, I, I got, I'm going to be you here said, all night. You said, get behind me, Satan, and then yeah. did your job. Yeah. There's a part where you have to, like, wheel a body down a hallway. The lights go out, and the demon's at the end, like, hey, what's up? And I was like, sup, demon. And I just, like, kept going. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it was not phased. That man popped into existence. It was like, I'll eat your soul. And I was like, all right, after, the, after I clock out, like, I got shit to do. Like, that's, <laughs> that's how I felt. I was like, I this is that. me in real t- retail work. I was like, yo, I got, sh- I got stuff to do. I don't have time for this. Yeah. yeah. You're so busy. I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely. You need this job. I'm definitely less phased by the aura of creepy or like creepy settings. Right. I'm like, okay, yeah, all right, sure. But jump scares will always get me because it's just like you don't expect it to happen. I'm like, oh, sh- what the hell? Yeah. It's a thing. By the way. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yes. everyone, I think if you watch the show, you know, Tiny Glade, that was great. That yes. was a fun game. Yes. Let me pitch you on another game. Very similar. Totally okay. different vibes. I am Dystopica. right now. Dystopica. Yes. Oh, I so, I'm so sorry. I just needed to, to guess. <laughs> it is. Keep talking. So cool. Um, I definitely can't wait for them to add more to it. But imagine a game where you just, under no pretense of having to do anything, make a cyberpunk city. Like a Blade Runner style future city where all it does is play cool Blade Runner music in the background and you can change your weather settings, but most of it is just like cool cyberpunk effects and then you build a city. Love it, absolutely love it. I I sat there for like three hours making a city and I like, it was a hyper perfect city. I was placing all the neon lights in the ways I wanted them to be placed. I was doing signs and co- I was like, well, in this corner, this is where, this is where the alpha corporation works because like, and I was like, and then you have the alpha corporation housing. And then I discovered that, that all the small buildings you can connect by walkways. So I made like yeah. a whole walk. How cool. I was feeling it. Um, Loved I- it. I played not this last Next Fest, but the one before that I played it. And it was pretty bare bones at that point. It was very like, mm-hmm. here's sort of the idea. And I have been curious what it's like on release. So I'm glad that it's fun. Yeah, there's, um, it's, I want to say there's maybe 25, 30 different buildings. Um, there's, uh, I would say maybe 30 different lights. The important thing is now you can literally put a box on a, 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 you know, put like a little text box on a building and then type whatever the hell you want. As I think as long as it's three letters. Yeah. So a lot of my buildings say Cox everywhere. So it's great. Um, There's a bunch of different, uh, you can change the weather. You can change the lighting so you can make it early morning or, you know, sunset or foggy or there's like three different types of rain like Mm. heavy rain or like the light you know cyberpunk rain um there's so many cool things you can do in this but yeah it it is only a vibe game you don't get anything there's no reward for making a cool city you do however as you so you can take a building and you can stretch it and make it like different sizes. And the bigger you make it, the more like cyberpunk it becomes and you can do stuff. But as you combine buildings together, you can unlock different things for those areas. So a great example is um, you can combine three or four buildings together. And then maybe in the middle, a giant image of like a guy flexing and like lights would appear. Or um, one of them is you unlock a giant, like, uh, I don't know, like whale made of lights that starts floating around or, you know, in cyberpunk movies, there's always, for some reason, a Zeppelin that shines, uh, ads down on the ground. You can unlock those. There's some really cool stuff. In fact, one of the things you can unlock is just smokestacks and you can put smokestacks everywhere that have like cool cyberpunky. What are they melting in there? What's cooking in there? Yeah. You can put those everywhere. So I had, and I think a lot of it is like, if you want to take a cool screenshot. So I made it. So I had the one corporation that kind of looks like, uh, you know, all that like Tyrell Corp evil pyramid corporation thing. But in the background on the edge of the map, I put all these smokestacks. So it just looks like the background is like, oh shit, that's industry over there, dude. Yeah. 
I was, it was such a vibe. I just shut off from the world and listened to cool cyberpunk music and just build stuff. That is all I want in the world sometimes. That game had, there was no like, you have 20 minutes to complete the level. Or it was just like, have fun, do whatever you want to do. So I hope they add more to it. The more they add to it, the better it'll be. Yeah, for sure. No, it's good stuff. That's, I'm glad. I feel like that's where I'm, I'm, glad it, I'm glad it wound up being a good experience. Yes. Mm. I, it is weird to me that the games I've enjoyed the most lately, uh, that and Tiny Glade, I can't wait for that to come out. And Simpler Times is another game that I'm obsessed with, where literally you just put on a record and like you're just a girl who cleans up her room and reflects on her life. And then when you change the level, it's because you change the record. Oh, cool. And literally you just jam out to like lo fi beats and. I don't know if it'd make a great streaming game, but it makes a good Jesse at home chilling out game. Right. That's it. That's literally, for some reason, that's where I'm at mentally. Those are the games I'm playing right now where I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah. Cool. This is did it. I, this is my night. Did I? I can't remember. Have I told you about wear cleaner? What? Okay. Wear cleaner? Wear cleaner. <laughs> it's a free like game. You're, you're a man who becomes a cleaner? No, so um, so it's a free game. Uh, it's like seven levels, I think, and you're just you're just a guy uh, who works at at you know a, a corporate nightmare, um, but you're a janitor, and so the first level is you showing up, you do your job, whatever, and uh, people in the office are like, "Ah, oh, do you hear we have to swap to the night shift soon?" sort of a thing and we're like the night shift i don't think i can do the night shift but i really need this job right it's on, on in that thing i really need this job though um and your deep dark secret is that you're a werewolf and so uh the the actual gameplay of it once once everybody swapped to the night shift is um your your buddy your pal the uh the security guard he slowly as you do more and more levels is like there's some kind of animal that i need to catch it and then he's like no it's not an it's not just any animal it's intelligent right like he starts to figure out like what's going on um and you your gameplay is is pathing out the best way to clean everything without getting caught because if you see someone um and if if you are near someone in their line of sight for just long enough, you will instantly kill them. You have no control huh. over it. So um, what you're wanting is to- but then you as, can clean it up though. And then you can clean it up, exactly. Sure. So it's, <laughs> it's fine <laughs> if, you, if you kill someone, as long as you can clean it up fast enough, right? Um, so the level, the, the like level gradient becomes like, finish the level, maybe you killed some people, who cares? Um, finish the level, but don't kill anyone and get a cute little sticker on it. That's like, mm. you didn't kill anybody. Um, and then get five stars, which is like, do the level within a certain time period. And that requires you to like path out exactly where you go. Um, and for a free game, I think it is so fun. It, it, it is, it's very cute, the art style, but it does, it does get a little, a little mm. gruesome. Um, and there's this, uh, this sort of like background arc of everyone rebelling against their corporate overlords. Um, so there's that. And occasionally you have to clean up things associated with that. And you're like, what is the lore here? What's happening here? So, huh. Yeah, this looks great. I'm so so. For those of you who don't know, <clears throat> the reason why it's free is it's a USC game. Um, USC, the school uh, here in Southern California, has a games program, and I've worked with them before. They're awesome. I've done streams with them. Um, basically, all these games are games that students, I assume, made. And probably for a final project or something like that. And if you go on Steam, USC Games has so many free games. That's awesome. And you can just go through the list of them. Um, and they're all going to be games that are made uh, because obviously they don't have 
the time to create like a huge game. They're going to be short, little sweet boys. And they're all kind of premises that they want to work with or stories they want to tell. And I, I love that. There's so many on here uh, that now I'm like, okay, I got to go back and look at this because they're all, uh, yeah, at least right now there's 42 that I see that are available. That's a lot. That's, pretty neat. That's a bunch of games, dude. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking at a lot of them on here. It looks like a lot of them worked with the Berkeley College of Music as well. Mm, that's there's cool. Some, there's some really cool stuff in here. I love this. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, neat. I'll check this one out. This looks fun. Yeah, it's cute. Plus seven levels is exactly the right amount of levels for me. It's short. Yeah, I don't. No. I don't know if it's exactly seven, but it was. It was less than ten. It's like not that many. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're on Steam and you go and you go to Wear Cleaner, on the side, publisher will say USC Games, and you can click that, and it'll show you the list of all the free games. Oh. Uh -huh. Bing, bang, boom. There you go. Bing, bong. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um. Yes. Did I mention, cra I mentioned Crab God last time, right? Yes, you did. You did pitch Crab God. I've been Crab playing God. more Crab God. Uh, Crab <laughs> God, same vibe. Crab God is straight up just like another chill game. Mm. It is. I, I love a good chill game. I am honestly, I think what it is is when I'm rendering a video, I just play a chill game because one, chill games aren't going to require a lot from your computer, and two, I can like kind of look over at the render, kind of go back, sure, kind of look over at the render, kind of go back. I'm not stuck in, you know, like oh, I gotta watch, I gotta dodge. By the way, hey, hi, Jesse Cox here. <laughs> I may suck at Elden Ring. I may not be good at that game. I may, in fact, be terrible at that game. Um, Go on. <laughs> or don't. I just, think, I, I just think that I'm not good at it. I uh, <laughs> played some of the DLC, and while it is gorgeous and incredibly cool, um, whatever my build is, it's not great. <laughs> it's not great. Guys, it's not great. That's it's actually hard. quite bad. That's what's hard yeah. is if you, like, get a certain way into one of those games, and you're like... Is, did I, what did I do here? <laughs> oh, I know what I did. Octo carried me mm. and I didn't put my abilities into good things or learn anything of value. Right. What I did is wear cool stuff that made me feel like a cool dude and learn a bunch of spells that were just dragon heads. Like right. I didn't really, so you can respect, I'm aware. Uh, so I tried and I was like, well, I don't want to learn, um, mechanics so i'll just do like an intelligence build and become a sorcerer because i watched octo use pebble to kill everything right and in theory that would probably work except in the dlc for on the ring there's a whole other leveling mechanic yeah. so basically you start with no matter what level you are the enemies are roughly the same level as you and so out the gate dudes are like <laughs> no and um yeah uh, I probably would have to learn to play that game. Probably, if it helps or hinders, I don't know which which this will do. But FromSoft DLC is always like notched up a couple levels. Yeah. So what I did is I went back and I started uh, playing through the original game as an int build. And right now I'm like level fifty, and I'm just stomping everything so i'm feeling good about it like i feel like i'm good yeah but um i'm also like still concerned i've <laughs> never done a magic build in any of those games neither have i uh most of the time i'll do a build that has a sword and shield because i like the idea of blocking yeah but i watched octo play through so i watched octo play through elden ring before i even played it that man went sort like he was like, I'm gonna make like an intelligence build. His first ability out out the gate is called Pebble. You right. shoot one little blue ball at dudes. Okay. But unlike anything else in that game, that shit locks on. Oh. So if you lock onto them, it'll go towards them. They can dodge out of the way, but most of the time it just goes. Eah! So I watched him play this. That man, I watched him do fights where he's like, I don't even know what to do here. Pew, 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 dead. I was <laughs> pebble, like, pebble, 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 pebble. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe this. I can't believe, I can't. I was like, I can't believe this. And I watched him, I think, 
I'm, I think he did Radigan in like three tries. Like I watched him. Professor he went Ratigan. <laughs> yes, Professor Ratigan. Um, he did him like three tries. I watched that man go to this battlefield, get killed once because he didn't know what to do. Went back in, got halfway, and then when he figured out the fight, he's like, "Okay, I just know where I need to be," and just went pew 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 pew. And I was like, "This is busted." <laughs> so in my mind, I want to do a magic build, but I said I want to do faith because I like the idea of having like. The, the like uh, black fire abilities and all those different things looked cool as shit. And I was like, yeah, nice. Mm. Um, little did I know, fireballs don't follow targets. Fireballs go as slow as possible. Meanwhile, this dude's like, pebble, 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 pebble. I was so mad. Now I'm doing it and I'm like, yeah, no, this is busted. This is you're, busted. You're doing pebble? Pure pebble. You're pebbling. I, I, I'm only. I'm literally only using the two starting abilities: pebble, and then the wide AO, the one that's like a cone in front of me. So if there's like six guys, I just do one cone, and they're all dead. Great. I, I'm like, this game is busted if you play as this. At the beginning, it's a pain in the ass because you have to like, you don't do a lot of damage in your dodge rolling or whatever. But the minute you do damage, it's like one shot, one shot, one shot, one shot. One. I um. Oh God, it was in one of the castles the other day and I'm walking around and I, all I do is I roll through every door. I'm like, dodge roll through the door. And then I just go, I see a guy, pebble, or I sit in the doorway and I look right, I look left and there's a dude, I'm like, pebble bitch. And I'm like, this is awesome. I am literally, yeah, basically my build is mostly intelligence, some dexterity so it can be faster, endurance and uh, vigor or whatever it is. Basically, Life, the ability to cast and fast casting. And I'm just like, right. pebble, 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 pebble. It's busted. It's straight <laughs> busted. And I don't, I just don't, I just don't know why. I don't know why it, it, it clicks with me in a way that it shouldn't. Because there's some bosses where like, I'll enter a room. I went to like a um, Ever Jail. And it was the one where it's like the dude who kind of like is on the ground. He scurries around. He like slashes you really quick. Normal Jesse would be trying to block and parry and attack. Right. Magic Jesse rolled away and Magic went pebble, Jesse. pebble, pebble, pebble. Rolled away, pebble, pebble, pebble. Backstep, pebble, pebble, dead. And I was like, yeah, this is my game. Yeah, the pebble life is for you, dude. It sounds like it's working. <laughs> I mean, it's working. And now I is, know to do the pebble life when I eventually play this game. Because I still have it. It is. The pebble life is the way to go. Pebble, Pebble works. It's great. I don't know. I saw a bunch of people doing a build that was like a ranged samurai. So they had like a bow and arrow, but they like went kind of dex. I, I don't know. I don't know what they were doing, but it looked interesting because okay. they were doing, they were just using a bow and arrow the entire time. And I was like, that seems cool, but don't you have to, wouldn't you run out of arrows eventually? Mm. Not me. Not me. Pebble, bitch. Pebble. The only problem is, is that eventually you run out of magic. So I had, I what had I have now about is that. all of my um, flasks. I'm basically running like, at the moment, I have five mana flasks, one uh, health flask. So I literally am just like, pebble, 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 mana, pebble, pebble, mana. And I'm just like, I'm going at it. Mm. So that's kind of the vibe for me. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I have bad news, everyone. What? I have bad news. What? Uh, I just looked in the background and I was booted from <gasps> Final Fantasy XIV. No! <laughs> I cannot. No! I, I cannot log back in because I'm still stuck in game. <laughs> Rip. I have failed us all. I was too busy talking about Elder Ring and now I have uh, I have lost my place. So. Well, now you can see whether or not the server this keys actually are better. Than this people are true. expecting. You're right. I mean, that's what I wanted to do anyway. I really wanted to see. Yeah, I, because, I wanted, because I wanted... you're the everyman. Yeah. You need you need to know what it's like. Never mind. It's fine. It's 57 people. <laughs> yeah, they're doing great. They're doing great. Yeah, crushing yeah. it. And yeah, never mind. I thought it was gonna be hilarious. I thought we we're gonna have like comedy gold. When I come back, it's like 8,000 people, and I would be like, oh man. And then I could have sat on stream and done nothing and just talked to people all day. 
Anyway, nope. now I have to do things and produce content. Now you actually get to play the game. Yucky. Uh, yeah. A yucky. A yucky. Whoa, whoa. A yucky. <laughs> Sorry, what? Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out how I can rewrite the fiddler on the roof. Well, I'm aware. Uh, I'm aware you're doing fiddler. I'm aware you're doing about, fiddler. <laughs> about, yeah. <laughs> about cues and how yucky they are. Yeah. 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 So. Tradition. Tradition. Wah, wah, anyway. Wah. Yeah. If I would. Can you and I just do a medley of musical numbers from yeah. all musicals? Of course. But like, you know how in a, uh, you know, it's the song right before intermission but and they do I one of those things. I can't do it alone. Sorry. I needed to throw that one in there, but I'm just saying that like right before intermission mm. where they do that song where it somehow is all the best parts of the first part of the musical all put together in one song. And then like the one guy comes out, he's singing the one bit and another guy comes out and he's singing the one bit. Yes. Can we do that? But with multiple different musicals. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that would be great. That if we just all we just combine like yeah. six or seven musical things into one song and we call it musical the musical you know how how every musical has like the i want song right. and like like all of those sorts of th it would be yeah, yeah th this is evergreen content dude we could mm -hmm. we could make a musical called i want and it's just a we just smash all, <laughs> all of the i want songs together it's just every like <laughs> show stopping tune from every musical, but just back to back to back to back. And we have a story that threads like them together. Because <sighs> they're all ballads. <laughs> and we just thread it all together. Like it would be the goofiest show, but every musical number would be. They would b banger, 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 yeah. banger. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. I'm here for that. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. Well. Cool. I'll start warming up for that, I guess. You should do that. You should yeah. do that. I, sh yeah. I should do that. Okay. I guess you don't, um, you don't right. need What's to warm song? up. You're What's already the first ready. song you sing? What's the first song you sing? The first, the first like banger? No, the first one that you want to sing. Like, what's the first one you want to sing? Oh my goodness. He had it coming. He had it coming. He had it coming all along. If you right, have great. been there. Yeah. Yep. I say, here's my pitch to you. Yeah, what's up? You come out and you start singing that song, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and you're doing this thing. Right. And then I lower from the ceiling, and that song morphs into yes. Phantom of the Opera. Oh we my duet God. Phantom of the Opera, and I'm like, sing my name, right? And we do that. <laughs> then you yeah. leave the stage, and I, and I sing memories right? <laughs> oh my god yeah and then at the end of that song everyone comes out and we do a rap from hamilton oh my god i don't know any hamilton music we I've do, never we do a rap from hamilton but, but yeah i see you know and that and, that, that can, and that's that's the order that's right. the order of this yeah that's the order of songs okay yep we have to that's throw it. some some we need some wicked in there no wicked is we do the rap from hamilton over a song from Wicked. Oh my God. We, yep. we, okay, we layer them. We Sondheim yeah. this. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah. We're yeah. basically Sondheim. We're fine. We it's fine. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and for some reason, we're all on roller skates. Of course we are. The entire time. Yeah. Sounds good, dude. I love it. Yeah. Oh, and we have to have one of those sets where it's like, it's basically just pipes. It's like super bare bones. And we're like, because it's all musicals, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's all musicals. <laughs> so the set and is just at like. At the same time, no musicals. And we're on roller skates. I mean, all right. I'm here for this. And, I feel oh, like. Here we go. No, 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 no. The brain, it's wrinkling. Okay. So at the start, at the start of Geek Enders the Musical, okay? <laughs> Yes. At the start, 
It's it's just it's just it's those it's those fucking those warehouse shelves all over the place, right? There, there's pi- sure. there's stuff yeah. to climb on, yeah. right? Big for our yeah. our chorus because of course right, we have right, like right. thirty people we're gonna hire to beat the the background. A hundred people are in the chorus. I'm so sorry. A hundred people are gonna be in the chorus, and they're climbing all over the place, whatever. But as we, because it's a smush, as we add a song from a musical, something covertly gets added to the stage. Ooh. And over time, people are like, wait, was that there before? And by the end of the show, there's shit everywhere. And somehow it works because our set designer is amazing. I need, I need you to know yeah. that if we're combining things, if we're smashing yeah. stuff together. Of course, which we are. Yes. You know, I don't remember what it's called, but you know the song from Rent that's like 5,000, 2,500, right? Like right? Yeah. Right. It's that, mm-hmm. but it's combined with Avenue Q, because we're talking about how much porn we've watched. Oh, I thought we were going to say. <laughs> right? I thought like, we- <laughs> how much porn have you watched? 525,600 <laughs> minutes. I like, thought, that's what I want. <laughs> I thought what you were going to say was that we do that song at the very end of the show, and it's ha- the number instead is replaced by however many musicals we managed to shove into the show. <laughs> How many no. musicals were in our show? If no, we, we do, we do, we do. Yeah, we do the song from Avenue Q. That's like the internet, the internet is, is really, really porn. great for porn, right? And then, yeah. But also five hundred twenty-five thousand six hundred. That's the porn we've watched. That's the and amount that's of the, that's, that's the combination the, a time time accumulated right, of right, watching yeah. porn. Right? Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, I think we I got feel something like that's here. A good one. I, I feel think like we really got good. some. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I feel like this is good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, half the chorus Muppets. We have to do that. Yes. And cats. Yes. And British soldiers. Who? And okay, wait. Because the pr- the last version of Von people. Trap kids. The last the last version of people becoming cats was very cursed, and I think we need to keep with that time honored tradition. Who of our right. friends? Who of our friends do you think would make the most cursed cat? The most cursed cat? Yeah. Kristen Delgado. <laughs> I think she would be a, an amazing cat. I think she would I think be a cursed commit, cat. I think she'd commit really hard. Maybe that's cursed, the curse. Cursed cat. Just a full cursed cat. Yeah. Mm-mm. Fantastic. Mm-mm. Yep. Crendor would be, I think, actually a great cat. I think Crendor would be like, you imagine cats are just lazy and like Crendor would come out, sit on stage for the two and a half hour runtime, get mm-hmm. up and then leave. He would do nothing. People would be like, wow, that cat was lifelike. Yeah. We just, we only need two. We need, we need horny cat, rum tum tugger, whatever. And then we need, um, oh, actually, we should probably have three because who's going to sing rum Moonlight? Rum tum tugger is the name of the website for the song about 525,000 seasons oh, minutes. Oh, there we go. Hold yes. on, this, I'm, I, you know what, I don't look somebody, it up. I was about to look up rumtumtugger.com, but I feel like I don't, <laughs> don't. want to. <laughs> I was going to say, we need, we need the Rum Tum Tugger cat, we need Magic Cat, but then sure. we, we also need Moonlight Cat. Unless, unless we somehow work it out so somebody else sings Moonlight, but that feels disrespectful. It's like the, it's, I was about to say, it's sure. like the only good song in Cats. I'm so sorry. It's, it's like the best song in Cats, though. I don't, uh, I mean. Memory. Oh. Memory, not Moonlight. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what I want is um uh the I realize now we need to have a we need to have a plot in this because otherwise it doesn't make any sense. Right. The plot needs to be <laughs> it doesn't a bunch need to make of, sense though. But yeah. Oh, it does. It here's the plot. The characters are trying to figure out what the hell a jellical cat is. Ooh, okay. This is fun. So, they're I like, didn't expect what is a cats to be cat? so important to, to the right? whole show. Like, what, but... is, what does that mean? Right. And uh, the answer, as they travel through musicals, at the end, uh, it's drugs. Hmm. Drugs that, made it happen. Is that the note we want to end on? Yes. 525,000. We have a song about spending. Minutes. So here's what, here's what I'm thinking, though. Yeah. The last song is uh, like, I don't know if we want to use Sondheim or we want to use, like, there's got to be like someone we can do, like a Gilbert and Sullivan kind of, but 
the last song needs to be. Oh, by the way, we need like I am the very model of a modern major general. Information yes, of course. It has to be in there. Yeah. Right. Also, I am the pirate king. We need to have that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We yeah. Have all that. Okay. Uh, we have that whole thing. But we got uh, we got to put some some moderns. We need some Beetlejuice. We need some Heather's Dead Girl oh, Walking. Obviously. Great song. Yeah, yeah. Obviously. But the thing we need to end the show needs to end on some sort of Jesus Christ superstar moment. Ooh, yes. Where it's like Jesus Christ. Like we need to have that superstar. Thing. Yes. Right. And everybody everybody comes out, <laughs> yes, in in their accoutrement of random musicals that they've yes. all been in. Yes. yes. Fantastic. Yeah. 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 I feel like I feel like we could do this. I feel do like you we think, could nail this. Would this make it too complicated? Do you think we could mm -hmm. put a little, just a, just a tiny smidge of Mystery of Edwin Drood in there and at the intermission uh, give everybody a card to fill out of which two characters they think are smooching? I'm here for it. I, and then I'm there's a musical it. there's a musical number that is different depending on who the audience voted for. I like that, and I feel like we need to include the devil from Damn Yankees in this because he's the one on the outside, right? Doing all that stuff. <gasps> he's so he's, he's the, like he's doing the crowd wall breaking. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So it's like, and that, and that at the end. Oh shit! At the end, that's why yeah. Jesus shows up. And he's like, "Get out of here, Satan!" <laughs> And, the, and musical people are like, yo, Jesus, what are you doing um, here? And he's like, I've come to save musicals. And you're like, yeah. yes. And we need all the characters from Book of Mormon there as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And they're just confused. They're like, what does that mean? And he's like, I don't even know who you guys are. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be great. This is good. I feel like we're on to something. Should we make musicals? I feel like this is the process that every musical has gone through. I think ever. every so. musical does this exact thing and winds up. Doing pretty great. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Pretty sure. Okay. All great. we need to do is learn music and uh, scripting and lyricism uh, and choreography. But like, it's nah. probably easy. We're, we're already hiring a hundred people for the chorus. We can hire a choreographer. And AI can just make all the songs. That's true. We do know that That's for true. a fact. Yeah. We know that for a fact. We just, we just, so, we just give it. <laughs> We just give it one song from every musical we want to incorporate and just let it go wild. <laughs> oh, I hate it. It would probably make it perfect. Oh, I hate it so much. Oh my God, I hate it. It would be perfect. It would probably For come all, out like- I need, I need, just in case this isn't clear, <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> just in case. It would probably be stunning. We'd be like, wow, yeah. that is. <sighs> Uh, let me just stress mm. with barely any input that thing made a perfect song so you if know. we were just like all right so combine these three songs together it'd be like on it jesse a song that came out i'd be like yeah we wrote this we made it don't question it don't worry yeah, about don't it don't look don't look into it too much it's fine don't look into this too much it's a, it's a really good song that we made from our own brains yeah we, thank uh, you yeah, it's whatever yucky mm -hmm. well don't worry, chat. When we make Geek Enders the musical, it'll be straight from our brains and you'll be able to tell. Mm -hmm. What's the plot of Geek Enders the musical? Go. The plot of Geek Enders the musical yes. is um, a hometown girl from okay. Alabama. Uh, Alabama. She comes, yeah, she comes to, <laughs> comes to the big city because right. because we because we got to work a jukebox musical in there somewhere. She's got to mm. sing Sweet Home Alabama. She comes to the big city. <laughs> Does she? Yeah. Yes, of course. <laughs> I decided on a whim that she's from Alabama, so that she has to sing okay. that song. That's sure. the rule. Anyway, so she comes to the big city. And when back in her hometown, she was the biggest geek. And she didn't have anybody that she could connect with, but now she's in the big city. And she's on, so up. excited. I thought yeah. you were going to say, holy shit. I thought we were going to say, back in her hometown, she was the biggest geek. But now that she's in the big city, she, turns out she's not even that geeky. <laughs> <laughs> All the other geeks look at her like she's some cool kid. Oh, my God. That's like never a, who she's it's been like, before. It's like a gatekeeping musical. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They 
think no. she's not even a geek. No, you it's just, about her having her perfect geek out. <laughs> you've only seen the original Star Wars movies? You're not a geek at all. Uh, you don't even know. Oh, my god. We go LARPing. Yeah. I can't believe she's never even LARPed. How embarrassing. Yeah. There's not much LARPing in Alabama. Feel free to correct us. I, I'm, I'm sure there is, but I'm saying in this, in this musical. In, in the Geek Enders Gatekeeper musical. <laughs> right, 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 right. Uh, so she ends up in the big city, right? Yeah. And she yes. falls in love with Max Cox, who <laughs> she thinks is like a cool dude, right? Because sure. he seems cool. But mm -hmm. really, he's kind of like a piece of shit. But he's like a gatekeeping geek, and he won't let her in. Right. Until she meets Chaz Chazerton. Yeah. And he is just a normal guy, but he <laughs> likes some geeky stuff. And it turns out that she was never a geek. She was just a big old stupid normie. <laughs> and the end. The end. I think we should workshop this a little bit. <laughs> Yeah. Or we can learn about, or we can do, or the musical could be about learning about other types of geeks, like uh, the different geek slangs. Like that guy's geeked up on drugs. Like we could do a whole thing. Oh, sure. We, you've, Chad, you've, already, already... you've already decided that uh, there has to be a whole section about porn. So I guess, given the way that this podcast started, Dexatronic yeah, no. bonus, bonus. Oh, no, this is a different musical. No, this is a different musical. That. These are That's different. Just a small town girl from Alabama. And oh. she's like, oh, all right, all right, all right. Wait, I got another so we've, wait, so we've got the, we've got. The I Want song, the musical, and that's right. different. That's different from Geek Enders the musical. Yeah, they're separate. Okay, good to totally know. Totally separate. Where you, where's your head been at? I'm so sorry. I thought we I thought were on the same page. I, I okay. thought it was another page. Here we go. Here thing. we go. Here we go. Geek Enders the musical. Small town girl uh -huh. from Florida, the Panhandle. Not the Panhandle. Is that what that is? From Flora, <laughs> Bama, Bama, Flora. Right. And she, I love and she, Bama, yeah, yeah, and so she is. She's like, I want to work at at the famous amusement park, Donnie's World, and she goes to Donnie's World, and it's about her being a geek on the weekend, because that because she dresses up as a princess, mm. and she's like doing a whole thing. And because she's a geek on the weekends, but her whole thing is like, she's just a Florida coast girl. She likes to go party and get crazy, but she discovers that there's a whole other world out there that she enjoys more. But her boyfriend, Biff Hardbody, he's like, hey, what are you doing with these geeks? And she's like, they're my friends, Biff. And he's like, I don't know about that. They're too weak. They can't hang around us. And she's like, not everything is about strength, Biff. And he's like, I disagree, punch. And he punches the guys. Um, yes? Un Sorry. Unfortunately, I think you're mostly barring a few, a, a few discrepancies describing um, the Big Bang Theory. I never watched that, so I feel like I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I really anyway, hope that they so don't. So the main characters, yeah. I was gonna say, I really hope they don't make a Big Bang Theory the musical. But if they do, I think it would probably be pretty similar to that. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> what don't you like about that? I don't. Not everything. You know what? Not everything needs to be a musical. Maybe what we're learning here today is not everything needs to be a musical. Um, the people who reviewed the Mean Girls musical would agree with you. <laughs> that was said with I think the most sass you've ever had in your body <laughs> the people who reviewed the Mean, mean Girls musical would agree with you like okay shit alright I really like watching because there, there are people who you know their whole channel is like going to see all of the new Broadway shows the mm. videos that are like here's why the Mean Girls musical and the follow up Mean Girls musical the movie um, are sad to watch and not, and and not great i've watched a lot of those because i find them very interesting 
How we could take a movie, that. how we could take the Mean Girls movie, which has become so, dare I say, iconic, and then turn it into a musical that didn't, that people weren't super into, but it was like, okay, and then turn it into a musical, the movie, despite having this already, and we turn it into the musical, the movie, and they desperately tried to make it not this, but it is, but it, but, but, but it still needs to kind of be this, because otherwise it's not Mean Girls. <laughs> So, um, let me stress, uh, there's a lot of creative bankruptcy going on in the entertainment <laughs> industry and most companies are no longer run by creative people, but in fact, like money dudes mm -hmm. and they won't take chances anymore. And so most of what you get are things they know they could potentially make money on rather than a new IP, which they're afraid they would lose money on because all people care about is money and it's really upsetting. Anyway, that's, that's, that's. That's figured I'd take us down a notch. And on that note, Jesse, what do you <laughs> think our homework should be this week? Our homework, your homework um, should be to stop buying animals. Mm, that should be your homework. Okay. I can do stop that. It. Yeah. Okay. Cut it out. If you, if I have to hear stop another it. story about like the other day, we just added another animal and that's making my life so crazy. Just stop doing it. Stop That's my homework for you. Stop animals. Stop okay. investing in more living creatures around you. Okay. Great. What's my homework? Um, your homework is to um choose a a thing that you find yourself buying a lot, but is relatively simple to make, and learn how to make it at home. Something to eat. That's so hard. Don't worry, you've got a whole week to think about it. <laughs> okay, got it. I know what okay. I'm gonna do. Great. I know what I'm gonna do. You don't have to tell me now. Oh, I won't. Okay. Oh, I won't tell I'm you. I'm excited for the reveal next week because good, I will be good. asking about it. Good. Fantastic. Good. All right, gang. Thank you so much for watching Geek Enders. We went really off the rails today, but I was okay with it. I'm fine with it. Uh, it turns out there's really no uh, order or operation to the show. And That's true. if you ever and thought there was. we can just do whatever we want. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I got to hang with my friend. That's all that matters to me. So, like, Aww. deal with it, nerds. <laughs> yep. I love it. Do you have any, any announcement? Uh, literally after we're done here, I'm going to start up the old stream box and Final Fantasy it up. So that's it for me. Um, but Those like, classes. yeah, I, uh, July 16th, kids, Gestalt, Demon Cinder comes out. Pick it up. We'd love yes. for you to play it. Yes, please, please, please. Yeah, Check it that's out. It. That's it. That's all I got for you. Yeah, I will not be playing Dawn Trail right away. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to let it. Uh, simmer a little bit before I hop into it. So tonight, oh, yeah. specifically, I'm not doing story stuff. If that matters, okay. I'm just gonna goof around and be like, I too, I'm not gonna jump in right away to the story. I, you'd be a fool to do so. But um, yeah, I'm gonna just dick around. I like as it. Max Cox would say, I'm gonna cut around maximum Lee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so, uh, tonight my cousin and I are probably going to play more Dinkum, which is like a cute little farm game. <laughs> that's cute. So that's the plan. Uh, yeah, it's just the uh, same old over on my corner of the internet. So, um, Blessed. if you want to watch me be a virtual mushroom and play some weird <laughs> games, that would be great. Uh, but otherwise, Hey, have a fantastic weekend guys. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. Bye. And 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 bye and bye. And bye. Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger. So give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on. 
scream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, scream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a